Hey fellas, welcome back to part four and the final episode in the TA-152 build. In this super exciting episode, I get the model finished. And uh, I had a request from one of my commenters <clears throat> asking to show how I did the uh, do the exhaust stains on my planes. Now I do those in a couple different ways. Sometimes I, I use an airbrush, sometimes I use oil paint, sometimes I use pigments. In this particular case, I used oil paint, so I decided to show how I did it. And so uh, if you want to skip to the end where you get to see the plane, I will put a timestamp right there, I think. That's where it usually goes. And you can go ahead and skip to that. If you want to see how I put the exhaust staining on with oil paints, then uh, stay tuned and enjoy the video. Thanks, fellas. All right, fellas. What I'm doing is I'm adding some dirty and griminess along the exhaust stacks. And I may come in here with an airbrush and spray a little bit of black right along here once I'm done. But I'm just adding some griminess that you see that runs along from all the exhaust that gets shot along the the wing root here and I've already grimed up the bottom and I think I'm almost done with it I did a, a little bit of a splattering technique and then just took some oil paints and, and dabbed it in there a little bit to kind of look like that's dirtied up and has been worked on I sprayed the bottom with um, with gloss and I also did a little bit of splattering back here I'll probably come in here and dirty this area up before I put the the rear rear tire in. Uh, used a little bit of oil paints and went along here and just kind of grimed it up in a little bit. A few different areas where the uh, expelled uh, cartridges would have shot out. Down here I blackened that with with some oil paint and did a little bit of streaking. So I think I'm, I'm pretty much done with the bottom. Now I will come back with a flat coat and spray the painted surfaces. I am going to leave this with a little bit more of a a glossy look on here and so what I want to show you is how I do this on the exhaust now on this side it's really clean and this side has already been done so you can see all the staining along here now once I spray a flat coat on here it will show up a lot better than what it does right now with it with it being like wet uh, semi wet oil paint so what I've got is I've got my Abtalung 502 paints. I think I've got uh, light rust, uh, some smoke color, and some sepia if I can find it somewhere. I don't know, it's in here somewhere, but I've got sepia as well, which is a, a real dark brown that fades out into a nice golden tone that you can see here. So how I do this, and I know I've shown this before on a previous video of a BF 109. I've got a couple different brushes, different sizes, and I've got some Q-tips. So what I'll do is I will start out, and it might be better if I just turn this up. No, this is pretty hard to do on video, but there we go. That might work. So I'm going to take some smoke color, and I'm going to hit the smoke color. I'm going to put it on pretty thick right here. And I'm just going to use the same brush, and I've got some sepia. And I'm just going to run some sepia along these areas, along the creases. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to blend this and draw this out. So right along this panel line here, right along there, I'm going to just paint it in. <clears throat> right along this crease, along the wing root. And don't be afraid of this, because I can, uh, I can always come back and just wipe it away with some mineral spirits. And for my base coat, I have a flat Tamiya clear coat on it. And I like using flat Tamiya clear whenever I do my uh, oil paint weathering. Now, for this kind of stuff, you do want a flat coat, or at least I like a flat coat. Because you can, it seems you can blend the uh, the oil paints in a little bit easier and get smoother blends than what you could if you had a uh, a gloss coat. So my black coat's an acrylic, and I'm using oil paints, so that shouldn't affect the acrylic paint underneath. 
I'm gonna come along here at the exhaust stacks and I'm just gonna flood this with, and this looks like a mess. <laughs> and keep in mind, I am not a professional. Uh, so there are a bunch of different ways to do this. This is how I'm doing this particular one. Okay, now let me get some more in there. And this is just gonna be a matter of just playing with it, to be quite honest with you. And the grimier, the better sometimes. Uh, then I'm just gonna take a soft bristled brush and I'm gonna just start blending this. Just blending it so I can get some of those like where the oil paint's like really thick. And this looks like a mess and you're thinking, oh my gosh, what'd you do? It's horrible. And I'm not real careful. I'm just blending it. And it's like, oh my gosh, got all that crappy oil paint all over. It looks so bad. <laughs> and you can see I am not being neat with this. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a Q-tip, and this hasn't been thinned with anything, and I'm just going to start wiping away and drawing it down and smoothing it out. And I can come back and add more and subtract more, and I can draw it up like this with the Q-tip, or I can take it down. So basically, I am I am just feathering out all this oil paint so I get a dark area in these creases and feather it out to that nice golden tone until I get what I like. Now keep in mind, you're probably not going to get rid of all of this if you just use a dry Q-tip. There's going to be some dirtiness and and uh, some remnants of the oil paint. If you really want to get rid of it, then uh, you'll want to wet your Q-tip down with a with mineral spirits. But keep in mind, it may not get all of it just because of the little. Uh, I wouldn't. I hate to say pores, but the the coarseness of the flat paint, it may stick down into some of them. Some of the little recesses in the flat paint. Okay, get another, now if I got a, another clean Q-tip, I can come in here. And it's just a matter of playing with it until you get something that you like. Then I can also add a little bit of rust color to vary the tones and I can come in here and I know this probably wasn't rusty because I'm sure it was aluminum. But it just adds a little bit different of a flavor. And then I can come back with my other brush. Smear it in. My blending brush. Blend it in. Now I am going off a couple of reference pictures. But... You know, uh, you can make it as dirty or as clean as you like. But that's basically all there is to it. Now, it may not look so stark right now, but trust me, once you get, if you took a before and after shot, can really tell the difference. Now if I want to accentuate this panel line I'll just take some more of my sepia and I'll just paint it up here. Maybe more right here and along here. I can come in and I can blend it. And then I can take another Q-tip. And just like so. So 
So it's as simple as that. And it does give a, a, a dramatic effect. When you sit here and you're doing it at the time, you may think, oh, well, that's not enough. But uh, once you get it, get it flat coated and you're all done with it, uh, it will, it, there will be a big difference in what it was before. Now already that looks pretty dirty. I may come in here and do a little bit more blending up, get a little bit more smokiness where it's stained and dirtied up this area. And then I can come along here in the bottom and maybe work some of these panel lines with, with this stuff, with the uh, sepia color. Where some of that smoke and soot got hung up. Just to add a little bit more filth and crud. I like how that's looking. Real nice and dirty and grungy. I'm just being real light here. Now I've got some stuff up here that I really don't want. It's made a little bit of a mess. So I'm gonna dip this in my Q-tip and a little bit of mineral spirits and then I'll come along and I'm just gonna take this up. Cause I don't like that right there. And that's the good things with working with oil paints. Now, if I came in here with an airbrush and did the same thing, it, I'm not going to be able to remove it unless I use like an enamel type paint through my airbrush because uh, the, the, the thinner that I would use for my acrylic airbrush paint would rip through the base layer. So with, with the oil paints, it's really nice because you can work with it and you can adjust and add and subtract and do all kinds of things with it that you wouldn't normally get to, to do with just a, an oil paint or with a, uh, yeah, with an oil paint. So uh, there we go. That's how I'm doing it. I'll probably work on this a little bit. I'm going to set it down and then come back and look at it and then uh, maybe work on it some more. So that's the basic concept. Just a couple different colors of oil paint and uh, put it in there, blend it, take it away, and that's how I do it. All right, here it is, fellas. And let me start off by just giving her a spin around so you can see what it looks like. A little 360 view. I'm gonna make airplane sounds. Okay, but I got to show you my favorite part. Are you ready? Oh, darn it. And I'm going to break it while I'm playing with it. <laughs> Those stupid spiral spinners have uh, given me a, such a hard time. I'm so happy that uh, I figured it out, and I really like how that turned out. So, anyway, let's start with the, uh, the base, and... <laughs> Keep in mind, I am not the most knowledgeable person when it comes to airplanes and World War II stuff. So, uh, But from my research, I found that uh, JG-301 was the first unit to get the TA-152. So I went with that. And I think these tail stripes <clears throat> match that unit. I don't know. <laughs> That's just uh, what I found. So I, I don't know. I may be wrong, but... Uh, they're the wild boars, and this is their emblem, so I went ahead and painted that on there, weathered it up, and I think it really matches, and, and I think it uh, <coughs> really fits the, the look that I was going for. The um, This kit wasn't the easiest kit to put together. In fact, it was rather difficult. Uh, I, I took my time, and again, I didn't build it according to the instructions, and as you saw, if you watch my other videos, I did leave a lot of stuff out. So uh, if you're building this with the gear down and the engine's open, you probably, I would guess you probably have a better time with it. <clears throat> now, again, you can't see anything in the cockpit other than the pilot. So if you're putting a pilot in, don't worry about anything else. You cannot even paint anything. But there we go. Um, I'm leaving a bunch of the little 
antennas. There's like three or four antennas and one little thing that hangs down here. I'm leaving those off because those will get broken off in shipping. But uh, let's take a closer look at it. If I can get it off its base. <clears throat> so there is a look at the pilot. I don't know. It's kind of hard to, to get up close to the camera to see it. And if you can see the the shininess of his glasses, that's Mod Podge. It's my gloss um, Mod Podge. I had some guy yell at me about mispronouncing Mod Podge. So I'm going to go ahead and call it Mod Podge. Who cares? But I put that on there and it gives a real nice glossy coat and it, it shimmers. <clears throat> the bottom, I started weathering the bottom and I did a couple techniques I think I showed before, but... Uh, yeah, I think I, I really like how that turned out. <clears throat> I didn't overly weather it, but I did use some splashing techniques and some other stuff with oil paint. And I think I got it where I wanted it. So there's the bottom. Now I did leave this shiny. <clears throat> I sprayed gloss on the bottom. I may have told you this before, but I sprayed gloss on the bottom and then uh, for my final coat, and then I masked this the metal area off and then sprayed the rest of it flat so there's a little bit of a difference in the sheen so there we go and there's a closer look at the finished um, exhaust now I did come back in here with uh, black and just airbrush just a little bit of black right here on either side just to darken that area up and that's about it. I really, I really like building this one. It, like I said, it was, it wasn't the easiest kit to build, but uh, I really like the look of the plane. It's something different, and uh, you know, I, I really like doing pilots. So I'm gonna try to put more pilots into the builds that I do my for my for myself. So there we go. Um, I'll flash up some pictures, and thanks for watching, fellas.